really too sure of how this works. But anyway, I've got an Insta360. So um, we're here at a bash spot. This is my bash spot. Um, there's some other park users around. But it's a bash spot that I've, I've come to for a while with all my electric cars. And it's another rem a, another bonus, actually, for a, for a, for an electric fifth scale. Um, is that I, I'm not sure... I used to drive my nitros here in the middle of winter when no one was here. But in the summertime, there's a wheat pub over there and there's people in the pub garden. I think they'd probably pretty quickly get irritated with uh, me and my nonsense. But anyway, I wanted to show you this as well. It's the new uh, Fly, Fly Sky Noble controller. It, 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 I have to say, it's pretty amazing. The finish is way better than a Spectrum controller. Um, just feels a lot nicer okay it's a little bit prettier so you know you feel harder about bashing it and the screen isn't color it's the screen isn't such high resolution but the battery life on it and you, you turn it on one of the things that wound me up about the DX6R the new spectrum was that you could turn it on and then you had to wait for it to load up it's like a really you know when they first bought out Android tablets that were rubbish it's exactly like that, and that just kind of used to drive me up the wall, really. When I switch it on, I want to be able to, you know, I want to be videoing, I mean, um, controlling my, my car. When I switch it on, I want to go. <laughs> it's as simple as that, really. When I switch it on, I do want to run. Um, and that tends to be the reason why I'm switching on in the first place. So, remember my Y leads? Running 8S on the car. I don't want to spend ages boring you guys to tears, but I do have a GPS attached to the car. I am going to run the car with the Insta360 on the bonnet. I've got a GPS on the back. Um, I'm not necessarily going to be doing out and out full blown speed runs, but I would like to get an idea of what kind of speeds I'm getting. Again, battery life, I don't know that either on 8S. I've got four times 4S graphene, 4,000 milliamp per hour battery packs. So 8,000 milliamp per hour 8S each side for each ESC, each motor. So let's see how that pans out because the 6S. Success was a 6,000 milliamp per hour. Uh, no, 5,000 5, milliamp per hour. So this is almost double the milliamp per hours. This year, and they are as high discharge as the other ones. So these are 65, 65C, 65C packs. So it's still a very heavy car. I got to be honest never ceases to amaze me how heavy these blinking things are. Uh, this I have got around the right way. I'm going to obviously use the GoPro as well just in case the Insta doesn't work. I have no idea what I'm doing with the Insta360 so all I've done is got it out of the box, read the quick start guide, stuck it on a tripod now and then being the silly idiot that I am I'm going to stick it on the front of the fifth scale and drive it mile an hour across the field. So let's see what happens. I'm going to turn the Insta off, put it on the car, turn the GoPro on. Right, so all I did, I've left the car running, all I did was drive it over from the far side to here. It's reading 40 mile an hour on the peak speed. Oh, which it just cleared because I put it over the mode button. So we'll put it that side instead and hope this doesn't come flying off. Let's we'll see if we have some. There's some lumps and bumps.
that is literally wheel spinning the whole the whole way through the acceleration there 44 mile an hour I don't know if you can see that 44 mile an hour it's on grass it's lumpy and bumpy as well that's as much as I want to push it on 8s but anyway I'll probably probably will push it some more get a bit more of a run up time is still going for the battery life as well which will be interesting to know there's some lumps and bumps here suspensions working hard around the insta 360 camera Haven't brought it in for any temps, I'll bring it in now for a temp test. That's flat out. And it's just, it's still accelerating when I come off there, it's just not a long enough. So let's do it. Like, I don't know, not even. not even 20 degrees literally and 45 mile an hour I don't know if you're seeing that 45 mile an hour on the speed so I think I'll just have fun now so on 8s with the 19.2 pinion we know Staying away from the donuts. On a 19 tooth pinion, 1957, we know that this thing goes 45 miles an hour. I knew it was 45, 50 miles an hour all day. Absolute canage. This thing is a monster. Thing is a monster right at the bottom end I got so much more gearing I can do and it's doing it's doing 45 miles an hour getting a bit more overconfident now still at 45 mile an hour it's doing 45 mile an hour on a 19 tooth pinion 1957 stock gearing for a low C And I am driving it hard as well, guys, so... Oh! Just check my temps. Lukewarm is how I would describe that. If you were to get into a bath at that temperature, you'd be disappointed. That one's a bit warmer, actually. Interesting. Interesting. That one is a little bit warmer. And that one... No, it's not. They both seem the same. Drive shafts are... <laughs> drive shafts. The drive shafts are sm literally smoking hot. I don't know. The drive shaft at the, at the centre center diff end is probably 50 degrees, 50, 60 degrees. Oh, it's a beast. It's an absolute monster, this thing. I reckon a 21 tooth pinion would be about as far as I would want to push it. This is a really undulating it is a grass field, but it's up and down, up and down, up and down. Really undulating. It's a monster. Absolute monster. What a beast of a car. Batteries have been going for 12 minutes. 
BSEs and not even breaking a sweat. Motors aren't even breaking a sweat. I'd say the motors realistically now are sitting at about 30 degrees, 25, 30 degrees, if even. So uh, that's all good. Center diff is not too bad. Oh, wow. The diff cups are warm. The diff cups are warm. <laughs> Oh dear. Let's just check the rear end. Rear end's alright. It's a little bit warm, tepid. It's only having It's only having 19, 20 horsepower put through it. I don't know what it's complaining about. What a wuss. That is a proper, proper machine. Well, I'm I'm actually quite proud of myself, gents. Stay away from the donuts, James. Stay away from the donuts, but you can you are allowed to dig trenches. I've got different wheels and tires on actually. Probably worth saying that just um they are the Mad Max, the standard Mad Max one on knobblies, I forget what they're called, big grip or whatever. On lossy uh standard lossy wheels or stainless steel um hardware. Yeah, let's uh Absolutely covered me in grass. That is ridiculous. I know the camera won't pick this up, but basically as it accelerates over 40, 50 yards, it's just... Um... Just one big trench. Literally one big trench. It is doing little jumps as well, and it's interesting to say it does not feel as nose heavy because I put those ESCs further back. And so, so much for me not. Caning the living daylights out of it. Driving it like it's a petrol car and revving it on the down, which is out for the kiddies playground so yeah 22 kilos traveling at um, 45 50 mile an hour <laughs> steering's doing all right Go and check her out. Still got the Insta 360 running. Might do some donuts around that, see if I can get a montage out of that. And that is it, that is the end of the batteries. So those 4S packs, stop the watch. 16.53, 16 minutes at flat stick. So I'm not unhappy about that. Do some temps. 
motor first motor is up to probably about 40 degrees and the second motor is exactly the same so we got some decent temps up but I mean I was hooning it and what did the yeah 45 miles an hour on the GPS I don't know if you can see that do it from that side get out the light James 45 not bad for the I guess properly second run pretty pleased with that peace